All right, welcome folks. Today we're talking about Super Whisper, which is AI powered voice to text for the Mac. And as you know, I am not using a Mac, I'm using an iPad. So I will not be demoing this, but I wanna talk through what it is and I have tried it on my Mac and I really loved it. So let's really quickly just talk about the key value proposition here, which is this, I, I really love their copy. Wanna write three times faster, you can speak three times as fast as you can write. And what I really, there's two key features I love here. One, it's super accurate. They use a port of the Whisper model from OpenAI, which is way, 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 way better than Siri. Actually, there's three things I like. So one, the accuracy. Two, the locally processed audio. It's not a huge thing, but it just means that this is always on. And for some reason, it creates a sense of trust in me to know that I can always use this product, whether or not I have Wi-Fi, and I love that. It feels really great. I'm often in environments where I, Wi-Fi is iffy, or I'm on a hotspot, so it's really nice to know I can actually use this everywhere I go. And the third thing is, I just, I really think they nail the UI here. And there's something beautiful about this, so I don't know if they'll, they don't really have a, a demo, but it, it looks something like this right? It's just a box that pops up and it kind of vibrates as you talk, like with a sound wave. And then this really nice feature is that at the end of your recording, you can then have it copied to your clipboard. So what I'm really excited about is tomorrow I have to write my performance review. I'm going to speak it out and then instead of having to copy and paste it, I will literally just open Google Docs and paste it in there already on the clipboard. Another little quality of life thing they nailed is you can start this by just hitting option space. And that's a great key binding. It's not available for many other things. And it just makes this seamless. I mean, I can already see myself just hitting option space, recording something, pasting it somewhere and, and off to the races and being done. So I'm trying out the premium version for 15 minutes soon. And if I like that, then I'll bump to, I think it's $5 a month. And I'm even considering just the lifetime purchase, which is I think $165 a month because you can download the model and it runs locally. So you can have it forever. I mean, this is a really cool product on a lot of levels. I love the combination of SaaS and um, this concept from the Basecamp team called Once, where you can actually buy software once and own it. Really, really cool. They've nailed the product, they've nailed the user experience. I'm really excited about this. Plus, I just want to show you, beautiful website, stunning logo. I am such a huge fan. I mean, they really have such an attention to detail. I mean, even look at this on Hover, this pops up. This has beautiful shading, just like the way Apple does it. Their logo is incredible. I mean, this is really cool. And there's just so much fun. This is a really great idea, taking notes on podcasts. I didn't even think about writing Python and VS Code. Oh, I guess you can actually use it to write in a browser as well. Wow. You can also use uh, like keyword shortcuts or, or expansions. So I could say calendar and it would insert my Calendly link. So there's just a ton of really useful things here. I'm super excited to get this set up private and secure. I mean, this just knocks it out of the park. And what I think is really interesting is there's a product I really like called um, called Rewind that in some ways tried to do something similar, not, not quite the same. They're, they're basically trying to record you all the time and then be your memory, right? So a little bit different here. But they have a really great UI. It's really smooth and simple, but they just have so many privacy problems that make it really concerning and kind of spooky to use. And I think Super Whisper really hits all the right notes here. That's the difficult thing about these AI products is figuring out how to integrate them in such a way that's private. So hats off to the Super Whisper team. If all you wanted to know was Super Whisper, you can check out here. I'm now just going to talk about products that are similar and kind of compare and contrast and just nerd out. So I have been using this decision matrix that I built to decide which product to pick. And last week I integrated exit.ai, which is a search engine. I used their API and I basically found similar products using their API. Super fun, super interesting. So I'm going to start off with the weirdest one I found. 
Um, I can see where they were coming from here. This is called Hush Me. Very, very interesting company. It's in the audio space. And basically what it does is it's like AirPods for your mouth. So it allows you to talk privately anywhere. And I really want to buy it just to try it and see if it actually works. The 10 hour battery life is incredible. Like who would, I mean, I guess if you're in meetings for 10 hours a day, that makes sense. It's got a wireless connection. So I guess it's just like a, a Bluetooth mic. I, what's funny is I cannot imagine myself using this at a coffee shop. I could see it being useful, but I, I just can't see when I would ever use it. It reminds me of, so I have this uh, Voyager um, keyboard, which I love, super cool, right? But super nerdy. And in some ways reminds me of this Hush Me where I love it at home. And I did use it at a coffee shop for the first time the other day, but it's just, I'm incredibly self-conscious with it. And I cannot be, I can't imagine how self-conscious I would be with the Hush Me. So just a fun product, hilarious. Okay, so the leader in the space before Super Whisper, really, I mean, you could say it's Siri, right? And Apple has had this di di like dictation for a while. It's not very good. I think their UI is wrong. I think the real-time speech-to-text is actually a bad way to do it. I've been using IdeaFlow, and I've also used Otter AI in the past. And what I love about them is they let me just talk, and then they do the voice-to-text afterwards, which seems kind of counterintuitive that it would be better that way, but I find it much less distracting. I'm just able to talk. But as I dug into Otter AI, it looks like they've fully pivoted away from, they used to just be like this voice to text notebook. Now it looks like they're just like a meeting AI software, which is probably a smart pivot, go B2B, but uh, kind of a bummer. I think they were a leader in the space. Okay, next up is Whisper Memos. So one, I think this theme of Whisper is really interesting. Two, I'm surprised at how thin this space is, right? This is kind of a surprising product to be around, to be honest. Like, the copy doesn't look great. It's very, very single focused. Like, for it to be just voice memo to email is a wild... I'm surprised this app exists. It's so niche. Um, so this is a small market, which does make me concerned for Super Whisperer's, like, long-term longevity. But... This is actually a really interesting one, though. As much as I kind of made fun of it, I think the real killer use case is doing this on the app, Apple Watch. Like, I don't really care about voice memo to email, whatever. But on the Apple Watch, and really just on mobile devices in general, this is super, super smart. And, I, I mean, really smart then to pull in GPT-4 here as well. This combination of Whisper, which is OpenAI's model, and then GPT to like Whisper to capture the voice to text and then GPT-4 to process it is so freaking smart. And I, I really love it. I'm very fascinated by this. Um, really, really interesting. This is also the privacy is so front and center here. That's really, really interesting. I don't know that using Google Firebase is and not using your own service is a, is a pro for me, but interesting to think about. So that is Whisper Memos. Next up, a little bit out of left field, but I can see why it's similar, where this idea of using natural language to describe things. And actually, I really like this synergy of using something like Super Whisper to inform something like Superflows, where I could see myself using voice to text with Super Whisper to dictate what I want an API to do. And so there's this really cool kind of symbiosis here where I could use Super Whisper to write instructions and then Superflows would transform those instructions from natural language to API like calls, which is crazy. I really like this product Superflows. I think the idea of kind of squishy APIs is really, really interesting where you can rely on the computer to make the decisions about how things get done and you can just kind of act as if you're talking to a human. Now, that said, there's a lot of risk here, and there's a lot, there's a long ways to go in terms of trust for this to be okay, right? So there's the privacy angle, of course, especially when you're dealing with private data, but there's really this question of what if it messes up? I like to really, the way we're thinking about AI right now is it's like a, a sketchy intern, right? They may produce some good work from time to time, but they're pretty high risk. You don't want to give them important work, and that's still where AI is at. 
And I think where it'll be for a while. What I really love about this voice to text use case is it's low risk and it's a really, you can use it today. Like I think AI agents are probably closer than I imagine, but they're not here now. This voice to text is here now, but Superflow's AI is really interesting and I like what they're doing. Then last is Quirky. This is kind of like a personal take on it. So I feel like Superflow's is B2B, like you're using APIs and Quirky is basically like if Apple really went all in on building AI into reminders. And to be honest, I don't really love it. I think the big problem is they are attempting to do this like shared, like a lot of the focus here is on a team or working with people. And I just hate apps where I have to get other people to download them for them to be useful. I mean, there's apps like Airbuds or I don't know, Sofa, like, like media apps where it's like, okay, do you want to see what I'm listening to on Spotify? I will tell my friends about that. But I just think Apple Notes, Apple Reminders is still really, really hard to beat, or Google Docs for that matter, when it comes to collaborating with anyone. Because those platforms are already so well entrenched, I think it's a really bad take to do team-based stuff here. Yeah, I think having sharing and collaboration as a big part of this just does not make sense. And truthfully, I don't think... I. So when I think about use cases for AI, it's when it makes something two times better, 10 times better. And an assistant, is it really like, I can already do this kind of with Siri. I can describe tasks as an actual language. It can figure out the date for me. It can figure out the time. This is not two times or 10 times better than Siri. Now, I do think Super Whisper is 10 times better than Apple Dictation right now. And so it makes sense. And voice to text was really not good for a long time. I remember using Dragon Speak probably 10 years ago and I wrote a whole paper with it in like my freshman year of high school and it was horrible. I mean, it was better than writing the paper physically, but not by much. And I think when it comes to these to-do apps, it's just really not that much better to be able to talk to it or describe it in natural language. Yeah, so that is my take kind of on voice to text and Super Whisper specifically. If I really like this, I will figure out a way to do a video with it. I really wish they had an iOS app. Right now, I should say I'm using IdeaFlow for this. Um, I really love this app. It's kind of more of a personal knowledge management app, but they have an iOS app that uses basically Whisper to do voice to text. And I've been using that. So really like what they're doing. I think I might try whisper memos and that I think I could do a, a video for as well. So this is voice to text as it stands right now with AI.